Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Kingmaker Enhanced Edition with me, Bring It Dawn. And on our way to deal with the Bald Hilltop, we had something pop up. Which relates to the Bald Hilltop, so let's put Tristan on this, slap him on there. It's interesting that the Storyteller actually had something unique. Not that he's busy right now, so. 85% chance to succeed. I do want to do that because it takes, it's like minus three to all stats if you don't Resting would be nice, don't you uh, solve think? that. Before I go any further, I do want to rest. Four, one, and one. That's pretty good. Counselor is waiting. Well, he will have to wait even longer. Because uh, I do want to rest, but I also want to make sure that that event doesn't pop up again My while I'm resting. Betrays me. Lindsay, I'm telling you for the last time. Stop checking whether I'm sleeping or meditating. I've told you a hundred times I don't need sleep. Fine, fine. I'm just curious whether you'd snore someday during meditation. I just want to make sure that the event doesn't pop up, because I know occasionally events will pop up and it doesn't show here. All right, to the Bald Hilltop. State your desire. I yearn for what entertainment. Ready and willing. A reckoning is at hand. Nope. Hold on. I want you to cast that on yourself. Lindsay can cast that on you. What's the hold up? Any fun to be had? I'm listening. Patricio Turino. Ona Adayana. Request. And I won't let together you down. we are unstoppable. Ha e Riti. Well, have that. They don't have cast a mage armor on it. I'm sorry. See, I have effort effortless armor. I can't talk or read or much of anything. We'll have him use that. That well, we should be good. And Lindsay was called forth. It's a quick save, then we'll go on up there and take care of whatever uh, monstrosity awaits us. In due time. Ask. Share your troubles. The Savidur. <laughs> Repent. I'm pretty good. I don't see. The unique, uh. There it is. Okay. So we'll try Hold Monster. We'll also try Vine Trap. You. 
Oh, we still have haste. Uh, what was the other spell I wanted to try? Well, I guess we shoot fireballs in there. Try a whole monster again. And. Bind trap. Constricting coils. Is he still stuck? Yep. to it, guys. Ring protection plus three. No, he needs that. Might give this to a Miri. I need a and Mary might need this. So I'm gonna give it to Reg though. All right, back to the capital. We claim the Silver Step region. Came out pretty much unscathed. I mean, Jaythal got a little messed up. But other than that, that's a that's a really good fight in my favor. All the skeletons held the line, and then we got lucky with the amount of wolves we summoned as well. Alright, loading times. Starting to get to the, uh, the good stuff. Ton of stuff I don't need, but I have whatever. Eventually, I'll go through this and separate the wheat from the chaff. Did I accidentally sell my darn emeralds? see them. Oh, there they are. I know I only need one, but I'm just gonna hold on to all of them. Anyway, and then G-Blast, I got you a bow. 
I think he's using Ankle Breaker, which is only a plus one. But it has a chance to slow enemy on hit, which is really good. The plus two is also really good. You can have both. Why not? Uh, let's go talk to Reg and Octavia about their quest. Uh, what do you want? Have a little chat? Alright, it's not like we have anything better to do. Uh, do you think we did the right thing letting Yanush escape? Sure, it's a shame. I was dreaming of smashing him across the wall, and he slipped right out of my hands. But you and Octavia are right. Leaving those losers to burn, only an animal could do that. Maybe some of them of those we saved uh, will go... Sorry. Maybe some of those we saved will get to Yanish's throat. A boy can dream, huh? Eh? Octavia is also sort of my conscience. And now you too. That's fine. I never had one of my own. <laughs> Alright, well if you need uh if you need a personal personal conscience ever again, you know where to find me. Haha. <laughs> Truth be told, it's easier living without it. But when it comes to really important decisions, I realized I'd be better off listening to you two. Man. Hello! Octavia smiles at you flirtatiously. Got any good news? Uh, do you regret letting Yanish escape? No, well, maybe just a bit. Of course it's bad that he's free and able to keep hurting people. But to sacrifice people dying in front of you just to save the people Yanish might hurt in the future? That would be insane. You getting revenge just for the sake of revenge? No, not at that price. Thank you for supporting me when I needed it. I was one small step away from leaving them behind to chase Yanish. Yeah, there's nothing to thank me for. Uh, you're the one that made the right call. Oh no. You you have no idea how much I was seething on the inside. Reg wanted me to chase after him, and I almost did. Okay, well, there you have it. Don Victus, the situation has become rather fraught. A group of mercenaries arrived in our lands to seek a better future. They banded together for safety. Some have been hired by our merchants as bodyguards. Alas, their manners are low, and the locals are prejudiced against them. They fight more and more often. The peasants want us to banish the mercenaries from the city. Uh, the merchants expect us to protect them, regardless of the peasants' complaints. If you ask me, we mustn't surrender to hatred. This matter should be resolved peacefully. Draw from the treasury to finance more guards. They put an end to these clashes. Nothing's going to change if we simply choose sides. We must mediate, though this money, though this takes money and will and a will for peace. Man, I cannot read. I am sorry. Ah, uh, yeah. Finance more guards from the treasury. Make sure the merchants guards don't fight with the common people. Whatever money we spend on new guards, it will be worth it. Uh, if it prevents any more blood from being spilled. Plus three to economy. Really. I guess because of the merchants, yeah. And then plus two to stability, of course. It seems more often than not, when you um, invest BP into those decisions, it's just, it's all beneficial. You don't lose any stats for it. At least as far as I can remember. So if you see an option to buy B or spend BP on it, you should do so. And I'm going to go ahead and buy some BP here. Let's just get 200, not 1,200. That'd be ridiculous. Alright, uh, we should probably upgrade the Counselor next, and then we'll claim the, uh, the region after this. Alright, rank 6. Storyteller's training is complete. Alright, Jubilas wants to talk. A visitor waits in the castle. Message from Jamandi Aldori. A true masterpiece. They have the loyalty. And Treasure wants to talk. Okay. What's the other one? Alright, 
Let's talk to everybody, I guess. Uh, you Grace, we have urgent news from Jamandi Aldori. The Sword Lord is asking for aid with an unusual problem. Here's her letter. Please read it when you have a moment. Lady Aldori asks you to head to Varnhold at once. It's a barony led by Maegar Varn, a brave soul who carved out the settlement from the wilderness. Until recently, he eagerly and frequently relayed to, uh, to the Sword Lords his many successes. But then the letter suddenly ceased. As you may expect, this is a matter of some concern. Jamandi Aldori expects your help with this matter, for she knows of your good relations with Maegar. She asks you to go to Varnhold and find out why they have fallen silent. Uh, why would the Sword Lords care about Varnhold? Jamandi Aldori seeks allies with anyone who has proven to be trustworthy, even if only a little. Considering that Varnhold is the closest thing to an outpost on the east edge of the River Kingdoms, it's also useful to her in keeping an eye on Dunsward and the surrounding area. Uh, what do we know of Varnhold? This barony is much alike your own. It was also established by a mercenary, Mygar Varn. He got his title at the same event you did. Mygar Varn is third or fourth son in the family, so he couldn't claim his father's inheritance. Looks like he hoped to establish a settlement of his own and gain wealth and prosperity that way. Uh, what do you think has happened to Varnhold? Hmm, a riot? A rebellion? But if that were the case, there would be refugees. Whatever happened there, it must have been sudden indeed. Perhaps a bandit attack? Barbarians? A plague? Whatever it was, no one outside Varnhold seems to know what happened. Maybe Varn simply decided to stop dealing with Restov. Judging by Aldori's letter, the silence doesn't seem voluntary. Otherwise, at least one person would have reached a neighbor and spoken about what happened there. Uh, Varnhold isn't far off. We should find out what happened there before the same fate befalls us too. And it's time to gather a party and head to Varnhold, Your Grace. And we will in due time. We'll, we'll get around to it. Your Grace, I'd ask you to address an important issue. You see, the harbors of the River Kingdoms are traditional locations for trafficking goods that are not entirely legal, which is to say, stolen or smuggled. Even now we see, even now we still see much of this though less than before your rule. The merchants fear that you might yet put an end to their shady dealings, that the customs authorities and guards might grow increasingly stricter and less forgiving. But if we stay faithful to the unwritten laws of the land, this would go far in dispelling their fears. You wouldn't want to make matters difficult or meddle in their established routines, would you? What does it matter where the goods come from, so long as we receive our fees? They're not making things difficult for us, so let's not make things more complicated for them. Yeah, let's leave things as they are. Order our guards to stay away from captains carrying suspicious cargo. Minus two community and the stability. Fantastic. A fine solution. Of course, we shan't tarnish our reputation. The sale of stolen and smuggled goods is far beneath us. Only legal goods will be allowed in our harbors. But we won't be too uh, querulous about it. As long as the proper fees are paid, the goods are considered legitimate, whatever their original source might have been. Amazing. You managed to save your barony from an invasion of monsters from the First World, but you were not able to protect it from attention of the First World's more powerful denizens. Believe it or not, the Conqueror's Keep has been chosen as the next location for the Inconsequent Debates. The Inconsequent Debates? What's that? A curious phenomenon that isn't very well known. They say it's based on a bet made by the Eldest, the rulers of the First World, quite a long time ago. One day one of them sent a delegation of Fae to Galarian. They announced where the red competition would take place. Don't let the name fool you, it's anything but debates. The contests begin as soon as they have enough participants. The contests and the reward are different every time, although every time is a stretch. Only three such occasions are known over thousands of years. Anyway, it's happening again, and this time the reward is a chance to ask any question whatsoever of the host, the competition's mastermind. Uh, this creature, whoever it is, speaks on behalf of the eldest. Do you see why we can't miss such a chance? You want to use this opportunity to find out why gnomes left the first world, and how they might return, right? Nice to see our association has left a mark on you. Yes, of course. I'm not too happy that we'll have to play by the eldest rules. You know my opinion of the Fey Lords isn't very high, but if that's what the truth requires, then so be it. In the end, who would best know the answer to my question, if not the self-appointed deities of the first world? Uh, do you know anything about these debates? Or are we completely in the dark here? 
You never know what mad ideas the Fae might have cooked up. I only know one condition. Only teams of three are allowed to participate. Uh, who do you think we should take as our third? I think we should take Lindsay. Something tells me the Fae are not likely to hold competitions in rope pulling or beer drinking. But the skills of a bard might come in handy. Besides, we should give the young lady a chance to channel some of that energy. Uh, can participating be dangerous? Considering that the Fae are involved, absolutely. But if the Chronicles are true, no one has died in any previous debate. Uh, we can't pass up such an opportunity. I agree to participate. Great. I'll mark the spot on the map uh, where the competition will take place. The sooner we arrive there, the better. The Fae Lords won't wait forever. Hooray! We did it! Another attack has been repelled, and the barony is stronger than ever. Your grateful subjects even brought you a gift to honor this outstanding success. Unfortunately, now is no time to rest. While everyone was preparing for the last attack, I was looking for a way to overcome the curse. I read some ancient books, talked to the locals, and then I had a sword... Uh, a sword? Had a word with our storyteller. And we decided that, well, he'll, he'll tell it better. The storyteller clears his throat. I'm a keeper of stories, Your Grace, and I have amassed a respectable collection over my long life. There are, of course, stories of curses among them, ancient and dark, having taken thousands of lives, destroyed kingdoms, and brought down... Well, our curse isn't exactly a real curse. We think there is someone specific behind these attacks. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Realizing she interrupted the, interrupted the storyteller, Lindsay turns bright red. Tristan turns pale. It's not a curse. Then what is it? Do you mean to just repeat? Alright, if this isn't a curse, then what could it be? We don't know yet, but that part doesn't matter. Lindsay waves her hand carelessly. What's important is that we're finally making some real progress. I'd imagine that the person behind these attacks is someone harboring great evil against you and your barony. I would not be surprised if it's the same adversary who is behind the bloom. I agree. After the last attack, I got the feeling that the Owlbears and Manicores came here as revenge for what we did to the ever-blooming flower. Well, I'm more interested in defeating it than understanding it. Poof. With swords and spells, of course. But you can't chop an ancient curse to bits, but I'm sure the villain behind the attacks would suffice. Lindsay, I think the Baron is asking whether we yet know the name of our adversary. Alas, the answer to that question is no. At least for now. Personally, I believe it is the work of some fae. I recognize their hand, so to speak. Well, whoever or whatever caused these attacks, I am sure they will continue. We must be ready to repel the next one. That's exactly what we'll do. Sooner or later, the villain will show himself. Once he slips up, we can finally punish him for all the trouble he's caused. Lindsay frowns belligerently. Tristan chuckles faintly. I didn't expect some vitriol from you, Lindsay. In any case, I would advise hearing this villain out before punishing him. We still have no idea why this unknown enemy is targeting us in particular. I'm sure one of our foes face soon enough. We've repelled his attacks three times now. He must be reaching the limits of his patience. He won't get away with this forever. Or will he? No. No, we will put a stop to it. Terrorbringer? Uh, yeah, make whatever your heart tells you. Alright, Kimo bows awkwardly, a broad smile dancing on his lips. It is ready. I brought you something. Remind me, who are you and what are you working on? I am Kimo, Kimo Taven, a carpenter, engraver, and so on. I can make bows and spears and staffs too, but my bows are the best. I have something special in mind, a bow that will shoot an arrow's deadly reflection with each shot. I will make it, I know it. If only my inspiration doesn't fail me. See, I don't think it used to tell you what their masterpieces would be, but now it's a little bit more specific. Which, I, I appreciate. Uh, make some specific, I've changed my mind, just think of something yourself. This time, the disaster didn't hit us, but our neighbors. Varnhold, a small town east of our barony, had been deserted in an instant. Okay. I'm there. 
So Terrorbreaker is a heavy mace. Grants the wielder the ability to cast Bone Shaker spell twice per day as a third level wizard. Sunbeam is a spear. Plus two flaming spear grants its wielder the ability to cast Searing Light spell twice per day as an eighth level cleric. Alright, let's quick save and then see what we can take care of in the Kingdom Management. Plus one to relations, plus one to economy. Economic status. Legal contraband. Support treasures endeavors. Expert mountaineering. Kalik is an expert mountaineering. Her knowledge can be useful for us while traversing mountain ranges. Devil's movement speed on mountainous terrain. Yes. Yes, we will, uh... We will grab that. Then I... I still want to grab... Here we go. Some people have brought this up before. This is when uh, you import your Farnhold's Lot DLC save. So right before you start the uh, Farnhold's quest. And this is actually the best time to play Varnhold's Lot DLC. Uh, I, probably before you know this prompt comes up. Um, so if you want like a more fluid story, you can play the main campaign up to this point and then jump into Varnhold's Lot. The campaign's not very long. I think I beat it in like seven hours. And then, uh, boom, here you go. So select that one. Alright, well, I do want to grab or claim a silver step. I also want to take care of Cheryl's side quest or artisan quest. How far away is that? I'm really excited about the uh, doubling movement speed in mountainous terrain. Because I hate moving through the mountains. I guess I could try waiting for 20 days. What should happen if I claimed and upgraded everything? Um, I don't think there's a time limit on Farnhold's Lot. There's nothing that directly affects your uh, kingdom, if I'm not mistaken. So I can go all the way up here to where Cheryl's at. Just a day and five hours in the opposite direction. Let's go talk to him. Alright, so he finally finished. No events. I can improve economic status. Which would reduce the cost of buildings. Legal contraband. Increases the chances of better results from economic opportunities. Plus two bonus to resolve any opportunity with the treasurer. Is also really good. Can also level up the treasurer. Which I guess we could do when we get back. Um, I don't think I have any... Yeah, he can't do any of that. Okay. How long does this take? 14 days. Perfect. So let's buy... I'm just gonna get 300 here. Wrong key. There we go. And so we'll do the legal contraband for him. We'll go ahead and put him on this as well. Then when we get back, we will claim a Silver Step and see if that has any adverse effects you know, with the uh, main quest that we got going on. I really don't like this next quest for Cheryl or Cheryl. Because you have to go talk to him, you have to go back to the capital, and I think you have to go back and talk to him again, which is just a big old waste of time, honestly. It's May we have a moment of respite? basically designed just to waste time, which I'm not a, not super keen on. Now, granted, if I had the Magister, it wouldn't be too bad because we could teleport. But we don't, so it is. All right, uh, the half elf is whistling carelessly. He gives you a graceful bow as he bow as he sees you. It's good to see you. How can I help you? Uh, what did you want to tell me? 
Sherelle looks around nervously. I beg your forgiveness, Your Grace, for making you come all, all the way to our distant region. There are too many guards in the palace that were chasing me recently. The thing is, I think I know who wrongfully accused me. There's a tailor in the capital. His name is Morhalan. He has the reputation of a brilliant master, so I wanted to become his apprentice. But when I went to his workshop, in his workshop I saw things which alarmed me very much. Vests, shoes, gloves, all made from reptile skin. But the pattern was distinct. I've only seen the pattern on lizard folk, intelligent beings who also live in the Stolen Lands, as far as I know. I tried asking Morhalan about it, but he threw me out into the cold. When I tried to start my own business and open a shop, I was literally, literally driven out of the capital. You'll hardly take my word for it, but it's true. A master tailor in the capital is butchering lizard folk to make clothes from their skins. I'm no tracker. I can't go hunting down Marholland's poachers, but you could. If only you could find those murderers in the marshes and bring some evidence. The guards will take this seriously, and we'll get rid of the capital. And we'll get rid the capital of great evil. All right, I'll track down the hunters. Thank the gods. I'm sorry I cannot say exactly where to find the wretches, but I'm certain they must be hunting in the Nara marches. That's where you'll find them. I think it's a random encounter. I'm there. Like, I'm pretty sure it's a random encounter. May we have a moment of respite? Is this sweep the norm arches? I will look because we also have the inconsequent debates we can do. I might head in that direction. Oh no, once we go all the way down there. Ugh. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna head towards the inconsequent debates. Don't you think? I'm not super worried about uh, claiming stuff yet. We'll get to it in due time. That's right. I can only have three people. I need Jubilost here as well. All right, and in the next episode, we will uh, take care of the inconsequent debates, and we'll go take care of this quest down here, wherever it's at. There it is. And then uh, we'll see about doing more Kena management stuff, maybe. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode.